Hey there, YouTube. It's Justin the Snap-On Junkie. How the fuck are you guys doing today? Welcome to the jungle. We got fun and games. We got everything you want. How do we know the name? Uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, <clears throat> I'm not doing real well. Uh, we are down here working on the Cummins. Um, I'm going to show you guys this little trick that I learned in case you're out there and you ever have to work on one of these Cummins. So a Cummins has three, N14 has three individual heads. Okay, and it has jumper lines uh, that connect the two heads for the fuel system to run through. Well, uh, I got one leaking in the jumper line and where this thing is is at the all the way down in the bottom of the head. It takes a little bit of a technique to get it out. So uh, this will be a repair video. Uh, I'll show you guys kind of how to do this and how I do it. It's a pretty hard like thing. It only comes out one way and it'll only go in one way. I think it, you know, probably at the dealership they just take the overhead off and it would be easier. But I ain't got all that kind of fucking time. So <clears throat> it's just a quick little hack and some stuff that you can need to do it. And uh, we'll put some new O-rings on it. And uh, we're going to check the, <clears throat> the uh, actual plate to see if there's anything we can do to smooth that out. So uh, let's go out here, we'll check it out, I'll show you where it is, and show you what kind of fucking problem this is. But uh, what it does is it just leaks fuel at idle really bad. When you're running down the road, uh, obviously you're not, re it's the return side, obviously you're not returning that much fuel because you're using it, especially when you're wide open in the pedal, and it doesn't do that, you know, but at idle it'll drip a little bit and I don't want the truck to catch on fire because it's right by the exhaust manifold. So <clears throat> that would be bad because there would be fuel spraying and it would be a fucking disaster. But anyway, uh, let's go out here and fix this fucking thing. Alrighty, YouTube. Uh, if you can see way down in here, okay, this is the jumper line right there at the tip of the screwdriver, okay? And it's got four screws on it and um, it takes a little bit of a technique to get it out of there. It'll come out this hole right here, but it's got to be really uh, kind of, it's, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, it only comes out one way, then you have to have some long picks to get that stuff out. So what I already did is I reached down in there with a long screwdriver and cracked them loose. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and remove the screws and get ready and pull that jumper line out and look at the bottom of it But once I get it out, I'll show it to you a little bit more there and uh, Hopefully you understand what it is So let me get you set up here somewhere on the camera. You watch me unscrew it here Alrighty, <clears throat> so we're down here. Here's where the screws are So you got to get all the screws out and this sucks Fuck. And then I use, I like to use this quicker picker upper tool here. That's one of the screws right there. Getting the screws out is not as hard as getting them back in, to be honest with you. Okay, we got the screws loose. Now we're going to reach down in there. Oh. 
Fuck, and you keep knocking the fucking light out of the way. I mean, Jesus Christ. I'm not doing real good here today, guys. See, this is the fun part here. I'm trying to get that out. This is what takes some technique here. Okay, so this is the jumper line. What I'm thinking about doing is going in there and uh, we're going to probably put this on a plate and then sand this up a little bit just to get it smooth. But you can see where it was leaking. So now what we got to do is get the O-rings out of there. This went a lot easier this time because I kind of know what I'm doing one o-ring there's two o-rings that one just fell on the ground fuck that thing we don't need her she was leaking boys right there we got a cut o-ring right here hold on here let me see if I can get it ah fuck sorry if you see my head well we had an o-ring that's cut so now what we got to do is you can see that it's kind of a pain in the ass. So we're going to go back into the parts room and kind of work on this just a little bit and get some new O-rings to put in there. Alrighty, so guys, here's this thing. What I'm going to do is just put it on the anvil of this vise and just... Sand her a little smooth, and it's not even close. Alrighty, we got this thing uh, pretty flat, and I've got it all blowed out. We got the mating surfaces uh, all pretty good. That's what I was looking for. Um, I got my new O-rings here. So what we are going to do is go out, we'll put the O-rings in first, and then we got to try to wedge this fucker back down in that little bit of a hole there, uh, if you guys understand what I'm saying. And it, this is what takes the technique. Getting it out is pretty easy. Uh, putting it back in is a little bit of a pain in the ass, and it will require some stuff. So we'll see here now what we're doing is we're putting these o-rings in and I like to start in the back and what helps you is there's a little o-ring groove kind of in the cylinder head and then you just push your o-ring down in there okay and I like to use these silicone ones uh, when I took the motor apart that's what they had in it so I bought a whole bunch of these because this looked like a problem and uh, it's turned out to be one. Now, maybe it's just me that I'm stupid, you know, which I'm sure everybody out there on YouTube thinks I'm stupid anyway, but, uh, you know, it's just about trying to fix this stuff. So, 
uh, you know, it's it's a pain in the ass, really, to own dump trucks. Wait till you get to see maybe the next couple videos coming up. We're going to be working on a lot more truck stuff. Sorry I haven't been doing as much tool stuff as I used to, but, you know, uh, I'm just trying to, you know, give you guys good content. And I know a lot of people out there like the Class 8 truck stuff or the big rig shit some people do so you know we'll be getting tools you know all the time but I just like to show you that I kind of do know a little bit about mechanics and fixing garbage or as I refer to it junk you know uh, because really all this stuff is junk because you know some people care about you know having trucks and some people don't really you know, they just, you know, they probably think that I'm stupid, that I have all this shit. You know, that's okay. But anyway, uh, this is what becomes the hard part here. Because now we got to try to fit this stupid thing back down in there. And it takes uh, two sets of, you know, you kind of got to get it in there and then get it flipped shit get it flipped around in there Alrighty, uh, let me turn the camera off here for a little bit, and uh, when I get it back down in there, uh, I'll kind of explain it to you here, but, you know, this is a pain in the fucking ass, so, yeah. Alrighty guys, I got that fucker in and it only took me about a minute and a half. Uh, I got really lucky this time. Um, fuck. I'm super excited about that. Super excited. Super. Jazzed on this. Okay. Now, um, luckily from the last time, I have this tool. Okay. Now what this is, is just a piece of heat shrink. Okay. And what I use it for is... I put the screw in there. I put the screw in there like that. And then what I can do is it's flexible enough to get the screw started and stuff like that. And then I pull it back out. So again, we're going to start with the hardest ones first. All right, now what I like to do is just get a little tension on that screw, if you will, just a little bit. You don't want to get crazy with it, okay? You just want to get a little tension on it. And then we're going to do the same thing here again. These back two are the hardest ones to get started because it's kind of sitting at a weird angle there uh, for you to get the screw to start. Come on, motherfucker. Oh, got her. Got her. Fucking A, man. This is the kind of job that you wish you had go-go gadget arms, you know what I'm saying? Or like, where you could get more of them, 
you know, more hands. This is the kind of job you want that for. Ugh. But this is the best stuff that I uh, thought to use. You know, some people would use like vacuum line or anything like that, but I don't have any of that. So I'm just using heat shrink. Fuck me. <clears throat> Alrighty, the last one going in. Here's a question, guys. Why is it that I struggle to get these things in, right, when the camera's on? As soon as I turn the camera off, all right, the shit just falls right into fucking place. I mean, falls right in. What the fuck is up with that? I think it's just video karma, you know? They were struggling with this one. Okay. So now we got all those in. All right, all our screws are in. And now we should have no more diesel fuel leaks. What I am going to do is uh, get in here with a long uh, with a long screwdriver that's kind of got like a where I can put a wrench on it and just snug those up a little bit. Yeah, just like this. Really what I need is a bigger one, or a longer one, but I don't have that. Okay, there's one. Okay. All right, now all we gotta do is test fire it and make sure uh, we don't have any leaks. And I think that's it. Hey guys, I don't know if you can see down in there, but we are dry. Uh, we got no more leaks and the idle is a lot smoother because it's not sucking air. Uh, so we got that problem fixed. Um, that is a little Cummins hack how to change those jumper lines uh, without taking the whole overhead off and all that bullshit which just takes too much time. Which I'm sure there is some Cummins tech out there that already knew that but you know I've never seen this video on YouTube, so just trying to show you guys just a little bit of different, uh, you know, big truck stuff. And this is kind of a kind of a thing that if you were out there working flat rate, this could help you a lot because this probably pays. Uh, I mean, if you have to take the overhead apart, that's four hours, and I easily did this in under an hour. And you know, I'm the you know I'm the junkie. So does it you know. Uh, it's not like I do this for a living. If I did it for a living, I would make some more special tooling to get those screws in there. But anyway, uh, that's really it for the video today, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Like always, like, comment, subscribe. Go to the Snap-On Collectors on Facebook. Join that group, guys. That group is doing awesome. Uh, we're over 9,000 members. Uh, thank you guys for all joining that. Um, what else do we got? Oh, yeah, go to the Instagram, uh, the snaponjunkie.com. And uh, that's really it.
And like always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.